Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, call the order of the December 10th uh, Public Works uh, meeting. Can we get a roll call, please? Okay. Chairman Wege? Yes, here. Alderman Gould? Here. Alderman Lockmiller? Here. Alderwoman Nancy Parker Trice? Here. All right. Great. So present. Awesome. Uh, moving on to item two. Uh, approval of the agenda. Anybody have any issues or, or motions to make any changes to the agenda? If not, I'll consider that good by acclamation. We have no announcements, appointments, proclamations, and recognitions. Uh, move to item four, citizen comments. No citizens in the gallery. All right, we're just trucking right along. Uh, item five, report of committee chair. Um, I don't have any report. Uh, Alderman Gould? Uh, no report. Great. Alderman Lockmiller? No report. Alderman Parker Tice? No report. Okay. Cool. All right, moving on to item six, city administrator report. Uh, the first item is uh, we need to select somebody to be on the sustainability committee. We picked all, or the mayor appointed all of the, the people, um, I guess two, two meetings ago, uh, but there's one spot that needs to be uh, appointed from um, the public works committee. Um, so I guess I'll be looking for a motion to nominate one of us. I would like to make a motion to nominate Brandon. He has uh, been passionate about this and I think he would be a great representative from our committee. Second that. Great, any, uh, thank you for that. Any, any discussion? <laughs> okay, do we need a roll call on that? <laughs> By acclamation, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. All right. That was easy. All right. I'm on the committee. Woohoo. Yay. Okay. Now we're on to uh, the, the fun part. Uh, Christner's uh, presentation on the, the event lawn. Um, so I'll hand this off to, uh, to David or whoever, whoever's going to be doing this. Michael, David, you want to yep. lead it off? So Michael's going to uh, pull up a presentation, a uh, PowerPoint presentation to review everybody with everybody. And so Michael, I don't know if you're able to do that. Uh, hey, David. Yeah, I have it yeah. here on my screen. I was futzing with my phone trying to get the video to work. So <laughs> looks like uh, no video for me. I apologize for that here. No um, problem. But yeah, I let's see here. Let me share my screen. Move that over there. And you guys should be able to see a, um, a blue yep. rectangle that says event pavilion. Everybody got that? Yep. Yeah, we see it. Awesome. Um, and before I get going, Eric, did you want to say any words um, kind of to lead into this, or would you like to just go ahead and get started? <laughs> uh, it, real quick, I just want to thank David and, and Michael for getting this to us uh, so quickly. Uh, again, they'll kind of give you the rundown of how we got to this point. Uh, Michael will do a brief introduction, and uh, we're excited about what we're bringing to you guys tonight. So um, with that, I'll, I'll let Michael uh, take it away. Great, great. Um, so yeah, so we've had, uh, we feel a productive last few weeks and have had the opportunity to be in front of Eric and uh, Craig and BOLA now a couple of times. Um, so we've been getting, we think really good feedback. Um, we wanna share a little bit of our process with the board tonight, and then also um, look in more detail at two design concepts. Um, <clears throat> so the, um, something that we like to do uh, is to try to establish in pretty clear terms what the critical goals are and aspirations for the project. And the, some of the items that we've identified that I'll touch on in the concepts are really trying to take advantage of the site that we have and its ability to um, create a sense of arrival to the park. And we think that's a kind of an interesting characteristic of where we're located 
as that kind of front door experience into the park. Um, the, the function here, of course, is very important and the ability for this to support a variety of different types of gatherings and events, as well as being an amenity for the park with the restrooms and um, drinking fountain, bottle filling station, et cetera. Um, that's, that's a key. And then we've also identified that there's a neat potential for this to have a very indoor outdoor kind of character and feel with it and really capitalize on the proximity to the event lawn to make um, just an outstanding experience here. And then the last item on this list is the, the interesting history, which is on the site. And uh, we've learned that the Madden limestone quarry uh, once upon a time was actually very close to our site and that's been something that's been in our thoughts a little bit. So, um, so of course our site is right here on this image and we got Brentwood on the left hand side here, Manchester up towards the top. All of the images or a lot of the images that we're gonna see here in this presentation, uh, you'll see the parking lot as well as the, the GRG trail. So just for orientation sake here, we've really not manipulated the parking lot in any way or the trail. We've kind of treated those as givens um, with, our, with our work here. And get into the design concept piece here. We did begin our work with some look at um, some precedent projects and I'm not going to present these today, but we did discuss um, several different precedent projects with uh, Eric and Craig, and I'd be happy to, to share more of this if anyone is interested. Um, but you know, a lot, a lot of cool ideas out there. Um, we, we also, at Christner, we held some internal, uh, what we call sketch charrette sessions and we convened um, a number of designers in our firm to just throw a bunch of ideas out and, and have, have some discussion. Um, so we've, we've explored a variety of ideas, two of which we've developed in more detail and are bringing to the board to review tonight. Um, and just, uh, we were interested really in any and all comment here. So uh, this is just an opportunity for us to, to get feedback and make sure that we're on a good path. Um, and so these, just a few images here, sketches of that uh, charrette process that we, we went through and then ultimately produced these uh, kind of two designs that want to start with or share tonight with the first one uh, being a concept that we called the, the gateway concept. And we kind of like to give these names, you know, it's a little bit more enjoyable than concept one, concept two. So the first one that we're looking at here is we called the gateway. And in this concept, we, so here's the parking lot. Um, and we've taken the building and we've organized the program to have a kind of a linear organization. And the, the thought being that this is a nice way to help to give some definition spatially to the event lawn. So actually use the building to help to, you know, help to reinforce this, uh, this space of the event lawn. And then to also to buffer the, uh, the parking area. So the building provides a little bit of screening to between the parking area and the event lawn. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure that there's a comfortable flow and ability to pass through to get between the event lawn and the parking lot. And so the, the gateway notion is referring to this space right here, which is a pass through that that connects the lawn and the parking lot. And this is an outdoor space, but it's covered. So it's a protected space 
and that provides an entry into the multi-purpose event space, which is right here. And then that also provides a covered entry area into the, uh, the public restrooms, which are down here on the bottom. Uh, and if I zoom in a little bit closer, <clears throat> so number one is that, that event space, that kind of multi-purpose uh, rentable um, party space. This is also the same room that would be used for classes. So we've discussed, um, you know, perhaps uh, school kids could come here and have naturalist programs. Um, so this is the, both a classroom space as well as rentable event space. It's got a little um, support area down here, serving area and some storage and restroom. That event is space is, is we were seeing that as being very open and transparent. So kind of a nice glass wall that wraps around that provides views out to the event lawn and then that would that interior space would spill out onto a terrace, which wraps around here on two sides, and that would have a nice roof over it that protects that terrace space. Um, another nice thing about the orientation with this plan is that you're we're really trying to uh, orient views to the north and to the east. And those are the, we feel the best views on our site. So that's gonna be looking back towards the, uh, towards Deer Creek and the park space, the soccer field, um, and you know, all the kind of good work, which is in prog progress and kind of looking away from the train tracks and the big Metro building. And um, so having that terrace that kind of orients towards those good views we thought was a strength with this scheme. Um, and also a nice place here to be able to see activities that might be right here. And we proposed that a good stage location in this concept would be on the north side of the event lawn. And that way, you know, if there's a concert or outdoor movie or event like that, You'd have all this good lawn space here with people that are oriented towards the north so that you don't have glare from the setting sun. So that was really, really our thought just to make sure we have a good way to configure uh, a crowd. So a 3D uh, rendition of what that could look like. So this is the, um, a view from the event lawn looking back towards the pavilion. And we have a little, I would describe the planning of this as um, kind of a contemporary planning where we have these kind of three volumes that are floating underneath a roof. And those volumes are the kind of support piece back here with the restrooms. You know, perhaps that could be clad in a, in a natural stone material. Um, the event space itself, which we're showing here as being very transparent, a lot of glass there in that part of the building. And then the third part of that composition under the roof is this pass-through fireplace element. Also, uh, natural stone we think would be a great choice with that piece. Um, <clears throat> and really natural materials throughout. We liked the idea that in this scheme, you could do a wood post and beam type construction that supports this big sheltering roof that provides that protection to the terrace, which wraps around on two sides here. And then I'll just kind of keep rolling through. We've got a few more images of this concept. This is now looking at the south side, so that stage I mentioned would be off to the right hand side of the image. The pass through um, is right here, if you can see my cursor, and that would link to the parking lot. And then this little spur connects to the GRG trail, which is um, kind of in the back or, you know, in the, I guess, off, off screen here to the, to the bottom. 
from the parking lot, the appearance would could be something like this. Um, you know, and again, that use of natural materials is something that we thought would be a strong way to connect to the landscape here and and create an architecture that really feels at home in the park um, with these with some stone walls here. And this is that um, that kind of gateway idea, you know, creating this portal that uh, helps to establish a sense of arriving to to the park and kind of passing through this portal to then enter into the event lawn space, which we thought could be quite nice. <clears throat> On the north side here, we're showing the the pass through fireplace uh, with the terrace. We did, um, I think, have a really good comment from, um, from Eric last week when we met that, and Craig, um, that perhaps the, uh, the terrace might want to be a little bit more generous on this side of the fireplace as well, so people could kind of comfortably sit on both sides of the, of the pass-through fireplace. And, and I think with this, you know, I mentioned the planning we feel like the plan is contemporary, but it does have a little bit of a, at the same time, a little bit of a traditional expression as well with this simple gable roof form. Uh, and then the post and beam construction as well could be, we, we thought a nice way to, to introduce some character in, in the design. Um, this is a view from inside and you know the, the model is pretty conceptual I have to say you know so um, you know not fully cooked but I think this does give you a sense of that kind of wood post and beam uh, you know the quality what that space might be like also the panoramic connection between the interior of the event space flowing out onto the wraparound terrace and then just kind of naturally flowing onto the event lawn space with with that porch that would be really connected to the event lawn you know so a great place to be you know if there's an act you know an event going on in that on that stage uh, in the background so so that was our first concept and maybe the thing to do would be to just kind of roll through the second concept as well. And then, um, and then we could uh, open it up for comments and discussion um, if everyone is okay with that. Yeah, anybody have an objection to, to doing it that way? I, no, I agree. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Great, great. So our, our second concept, um, we were having a little fun with this one. And the second one we called the Corey concept and um, kind of just bear with me here. <laughs> kind of go, go with me here. Um, so the Madden stone quarry was uh, on our site. And of course now it's all filled in. So we don't really know exactly where the, the extents of the quarry is. But we know it's nearby um, and it's just kind of interesting. There's some really cool photographs that we've seen of it in operation. Uh, you know, we know it was active in, you know, the back in the 1800s and first part of the last century, uh, producing a uh, kind of a light gray limestone. And, you know, that I think was in our, in our thoughts when we were uh, doing some of the charrette work and so with this concept, there is an architectural idea of, you know, having a volume and then kind of cutting into it or carving into it. And we thought that might actually relate well to our program. And um, this kind of carved idea, I think you can see it in the plan here. So we have these three rectangles, which would be more solid and opaque you know, potentially clad in a, in a nice stone material. And then those contrast with a more open central space here, which is the, um, the multi-purpose event space. So our supporting, so the kind of the diagram here is our supporting functions like restrooms and storage. Uh, we got a little mechanical room and we've got the serving space 
for the event, the event room. All of those things would happen in these kind of more solid, you know, kind of more opaque volumes. And then a lot of transparency and glass in that central um, event space. This one, we also have a different site, a slightly different site location. So in the first concept, we were down here a little bit more to the south. And with this concept, we pulled it to the north um, with the thought that more of a kind of uninterrupted flow between the event lawn and the parking lot could be seen as a good thing. Um, you know, in the first concept, you're creating a little bit of a buffer. And here, the idea was, you know, just a, an uninterrupted flow. And then the other nice thing about this location would be the restrooms, which are here at the top of the screen, they have really good proximity to the playground as well as the soccer field and some of the other, uh, the amphitheater and some of the other spaces to the north. So if we look at that plan now, zoomed in a bit, <clears throat> uh, again, you got restrooms here at the top, storage, the facility storage would happen uh, down here, uh, label number four. One is that event space. And then similar to the first scheme, there's a wraparound terrace, which is shown here in two. And the idea that that space can can flow out onto the event lawn. So when we look at that in 3D, uh, with this concept, we, we took a more of a contemporary, um, you might say kind of more of a contemporary treatment with this building. Um, and you can see the you know, the idea, again, of having a, a sheltering roof that protects that terrace, you know, very open and flowing space here in the middle and anchored by these um, stone volumes that kind of form the back and the, the north side here. <clears throat> As you approach the building from the parking lot, you would have this uh, vantage and the, you know, you would, we would see these stone volumes as, you know, simple forms, but the potential for a very, you know, rich expression with a nice material, stone material. Um, as you approach the entry to the event space, it really opens up, you know, it kind of goes from kind of more solid, a bit more enclosed to very open and flowing as you move around and onto the terrace. And then just for reference, this is the event lawn space here off to the side with that temporary stage location showing in the background. And then of course the parking lot would be on the left side of this image. Moving around to the north side, <clears throat> and these are, so those kind of blocks, um, the volumes where you would have the restrooms, the, uh, the public restrooms. And we um, also have some views into the event space, but on this side, they're kind of more, these kind of glimpses in, and then on the, the event lawn space, you'd have more of that open panorama into the space. Um, and, you know, again, you know, the idea of having a really, you know, nice material for this and that a lot of the character of this architecture could come from the material choices and the detailing um, we thought was an interesting aesthetic here. And it brought this project to mind. This is a Christner, recent Christner project at the Missouri Botanical Garden. And our part of it was this new addition right here. There's also some interior renovation, but what I wanted to mention is the, is the new addition and how it's a simple form, but it's a really beautiful stone that was used. Um, this is from, is Corey down in St. Genevieve area. And we, I thought it was a, maybe a good reference to some of our thoughts here on the, the what we called the Cory concept. 
And, you know, that carved notion, that idea of relating to the stone, you know, that, that could be pulled to the interior as well. And we saw that that, you know, that beautiful stone, that could also have an expression inside the building as well. And that could be, that could be kind of a neat aspect to this, to this design as well. And then I think my last image here is sitting on the terrace, looking back towards the event space with the terror, uh, you know, with that kind of porch that wraps around, uh, perhaps a stone, a stone fireplace could be built into one of the volumes. And you know, that could be a great, that could be a great element to gather around and for people to focus around um, and just have a nice extension of this of this event space that also has a great connection out to the event lawn and uh, you know just another great place to sit and watch a concert or uh, outdoor movie or just be connected to different activities going on in that lawn space. So with that, I mean, we'd love to just hear any reactions, comments, questions. Yeah, I'll open it up to the board. I can't see anybody, unfortunately, but so. We can, here. Yeah, I can see you guys. There, now you can see everybody. <laughs> yeah, Steve, Steve, is your hand up? Yeah. Um, and who is it? Uh, Michael, I guess, gave the presentation. Yes, what, Mike, Michael Browning. I kind of like the way that you tied it into the Madden Quarry, on, really on both of them, um, for the exteriors. Uh, what type of roof material is that first one with the peaked roof? Is that metal? Yeah, that, that was a, we had thought about a standing scene metal that would be there. And there's some different ways you could do that. Um, we did a recent project out at the uh, Ladue, um, or in Ladue, the community school that had a pretty affordable, um, you know, nice standing seam metal. So that, that I think was what, was what was in my mind when we made that illustration. I kind of like the first uh, building, if the bathrooms could somehow be on the other side of the building closer to the soccer fields and uh, you know some of the amenities that are going to be in there um, would be my only concern with that one and I, I, I guess even even like your second one the way it's pushed up closer to the stage I think is for people with the uh, disabilities ADA that terrace is a lot more closer to the stage and open for them coming right off the parking lot. Yeah, and I was just gonna suggest that you could certainly take the first scheme and push it more to the north, and that would get the restrooms, to your point, closer to some of those activities on that side. Um, we, we could also think about just flipping the whole orientation, um, you know, like mirroring the plan, if that makes sense. Sure. The, the one thing I worry about that though is it is nice having the terrace viewing towards the north and the east. And when the terrace is viewing to the south, that's going to make the metro building there, which is kind of imposing and not so friendly, very prominent for that terrace experience. So um, that's my only caution on that. But I, I mean, sliding the building to the north, I think we would, we could certainly look at that. Okay, thank you. Did yeah, Mike Jeff? share his screen again, or are you all good with that? Okay. No, I'm, I'm okay. back with that. I think of everybody was. First of all, thank you so much. Um, a lot of great work. A lot of, um, I, I appreciate seeing the process that you went through and, and some inspiration. I think that that helps frame things up. Love that you've um, keyed in on a historical aspect of the area. I think um, from a material standpoint, Anytime we can um, tie back to the heritage of Brentwood, I think it's it's a solid, uh, uh, creative way to go. Um, so I, I, I thank you for that. Um, of the, you know, 
the, the two, I think you did a, a great job. I agree with uh, Alderman Lockmiller's point that my, some of my comments were the restaurant, restrooms potentially being too far from the rest of the park. It's interesting when you talked about it being the, the gateway or the first thing that you see. I think, I guess since I live so close to where the tunnel is going to be, I, I always, it, it's, it's, it's hard to decide which is the front or the back of the, of the park because I think people are coming from all directions. I do agree with you though, however, that um, the most beautiful view is gonna be how you've oriented most of uh, what you've shown us. I, I think one thing for Craig to potentially answer for us is how visible is that weir wall going to be with the, with the lake? Because I think that again could be real, have a real nice backdrop to it and potentially bring some of the materials or even design of what that weir wall is going to look like um, into and kind of coordinate that, that whole aesthetic um, to tie it in even more. Uh, because of that, I think, you know, the, the gateway concept that you shared to me had a little bit more of that natural feel, but still had some modern touches and, and kind of a, a real classic look. Um, the quarry one, I think, you know, potentially might go a little too modern for 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 a Brentwood aesthetic, um, even though I personally love it. Um, I, I'm kind of thinking about the city of warmth and the whole area of of how this is we we're reclaiming a natural area for flood mitigation, but we're we're not just you know putting it in a big creek, uh, channel and and a concrete basin. We're we're really trying to get a natural uh, beauty. Uh, back to the city um, in here. So those are my comments. I think um, uh, the other, can, I guess, question I have for you is the materials that we're choosing or that you guys are choosing, um, what's the maintenance on uh, more natural materials? Is it going to be high, high maintenance costs? Um, do they patina really well and we don't have to really do much? Um, so I, I think those are the things that uh, low maintenance for long-term um, it has to look good. So those are my comments. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. Um, appreciate that. I, I would, on the maintenance aspect of it, uh, we would be striving to have as low maintenance as possible. Um, and some of the things, I mean, the, the stone, for example, you know, that can be done in such a way that it's a low maintenance um, facade. I mean, they're, there would be upkeep on that mortar that would need to happen, um, assuming that we used a mortared um, kind of veneer. Uh, but you know that that cycle would be pretty long term. You know, just kind of a tuck pointing. Um, and the I mentioned wood post and beam. I think one of the the real places where wear becomes an issue is when it's exposed to weather. So having that big overhanging roof would be a strategy that really helps you to kind of cut down on, um, you know, where just from the elements on the wood, you know, the roofing material, you know, also we'd want a, you know, a, a, a real durable solution there. So, um, I mean, so that, that comment is well received that, you know, we would certainly be looking to minimize your, your maintenance requirements on this. Yeah, we'd hate to have to slap a bunch of paint on it sometime just to cover up, uh, you know, and, and destroy the, the whole aesthetic that, that was established from the beginning, right? Um, yes. Uh, uh, and again, I, I, I echo the, the restroom comment, although I do understand from a design and layout standpoint with the gateway, you may still need to keep those restrooms anchored on the, on the south end of that structure. Um, but anything that can get it again, uh, the, the the big portion of the park with the lake and the and the uh, soccer field, amphitheater, all of that um, is going to be um, on the other end. So we don't want to have people having to go all the way to the south to just to go to the bathroom, you know. So right. give, give that consideration. Yep. And I guess one one comment, I guess, on the restrooms and being on the south side, I, understand, I totally understand the thought about being closer to the soccer field and the rest of the park. But the good thing is it's a very small building in general. So the extra distance you would have to walk from one end of the building to the other isn't too great. So 
totally agree. Uh, yeah. It'd probably be more of a wayfinding signage uh, solution as well to be considered to get those folks from that area of the park down to the to the other end of the building. So, thank you. Yeah, Nancy. Uh, I would, I, I sort of echo the comments that have been made. I, uh, while I thought both designs were beautiful, I sort of feel like the gateway was a little more open, welcoming. Um, the stone is beautiful, but I felt like where you used it in the botanical garden, it was, it was stunning, but here it feels like it might close off that building a little bit. And um, I just felt like the gateway, I really like the gateway. Um, sort of speaking as a parent whose kids are now much older, but if you're at a soccer game, you might be watching one kid at a soccer game. You got two other kids playing on the playground. Somebody needs to go to the bathroom. You want to watch your kids playing soccer, but you might let one kid and a friend run to the play to the restroom if you can see the door. But if they have to go around to the other side of the building, even if it's not far, I wouldn't let my little kids go where I couldn't see the door. So I, I do think we need to think about how to get the bathroom um, at a point where you can see it from the north side near the playground and the event space um, without, I don't know if there's a way to do that without messing up the, the beautiful views that you're trying to go for in the gateway. But um, that's sort of my two cents there. And then I would, uh, I know Brandon hasn't, express anything, but I'd also be curious what the staff uh, and uh, what Eric and Bola and uh, Craig uh, think about the designs. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll go. I mean, uh, I had the same thoughts that Nancy did right off, off the bat and uh, not just the bathrooms, but, um, you know, this building is, is maybe going to block visual to the playground. So while you're at, uh, you know, music on the menu and your kids want to go play on the playground, you might not be able to see them. Uh, over at the playground. So it seems like, and I was trying to think where you'd have to sit to kind of get that line of sight uh, on them. So I, I think that should be a, a big consideration, not just the bathrooms. Again, I had that first thought too, like I wouldn't want my kids to run around the end of that, um, you know. Um, and then and then my other thought, I, all this glass, and maybe I'm just like an old, old guy, but I just, I feel like that's going to be like a you know, once the high school kids start throwing rocks at that stuff in the middle of the night on a dare, I don't know, something about that, um, I don't know, just my thought. And then I'm struggling personally with the fireplace, honestly, but I do trust Eric to know the, the trends of, of what things are doing. I, I can't feel when we would ever use that or when people would want to use that, um, but, but I will trust the you know, professional's judgment that that is something that would be valuable for this thing. But, but generally, I like, the, I like the first concept in terms of the simplicity. I thought it, I thought it had like some design elements similar to some of the pavilions we have around town. So I, I think that was actually pretty cool with the way the beams um, look. So uh, I was a fan of that. And I, I get the, the gateway concept, but it just seems like we got to consider the line of sights on that. And, you know, maybe just a quick response. I think that, um, you know, one thing we might consider if we really want to flip the orientation we might consider some additional landscape elements, you know, trees and things to help give you more screening of those views to the south that are not favorable. Um, so I don't, I don't want to make it seem like there's no other way to do this. I mean, you know, if we, we could certainly think about the implications of getting those restrooms more on the north side. Um, you could also have a pass-through type restroom as well. So you could have a ent like door on both sides. So if you still wanted to have an entry off of that kind of more central, what, we, what I was calling the gateway, you know, off of that center, you could do that. But then maybe the restroom could be, could pass through and you have a door on that north wall as well. And that would give you that visibility from, from the north side too. So. Um, so, I mean, this is helpful. This is the kind of stuff that we're, we are wanting to hear just so that we can, um, you know, feel like we're on the right track here. And I'll just make one more comment just for my personal, this, this feels like the right size of a, a building, right? So I know some of the preliminary sketch and everybody knows how I felt about those. So um, this, this feels right um, to me. So I, I think Nancy had a great suggestion, you know, Eric, um, Bola, anybody on staff want to kind of give their opinions or, you know, again, you're the professionals on this of uh, what, what you're thinking. Sure. I, I know that I was incredibly excited when I saw the designs. Um, when we talk about 
uh, my first uh, my first concern when I talked about this is wanted something that was going to fit into the natural feel of the park, and I felt Christner hit that completely. Um, when we talked about the, I was real excited when we started talking about the history of uh, the Madden Quarry and then using sort of the natural stone that fit into that and, and then sorting, uh, putting the homage, the homage to it. Uh, that was really exciting too. And to me, just hitting the, the history of the park and, and just the natural feel of it, the, the flow from the inside to the outside, one, we have a, a usual space inside that then can also flow from inside to outside. And even where you see the cantilever lights, it even expands out to the lawn. So we can go almost three tiers of different usable space, which makes that even more flexible for me and my staff. Uh, and for rentals too. So uh, I think they took uh, what we talked about and, and went forward on, on both designs, to be completely honest. So uh, even though they called uh, concept two the quarry design, I see a lot of the natural stone in the first design as well. Uh, I like both designs. Uh, I, you know, part of me likes to see different things from each design, uh, much like any uh, any park director like, I like this from A and this from B and can we move it? And that's the best part of the next thing. If we move forward is get to talk a little bit about each of those things. Um, so I, I like you guys, I think I trend a little bit more to the first design because I do think it's a little bit more open. Uh, you get to see that little bit more open feel. Uh, and, and not that I don't like concept two because I do think it's uh, as Alderman Gold said, it is is modern. I do like that modern feel, but I think it just A has, or concept one, the, the gateway, it's just a little bit more classic, a little bit more uh, contemporary and fits uh, the natural feel of what we're going to be doing down in Brentwood Park, uh, sorry, Normus Park. And, and so that's what, that's what kind of what my feeling was. And, and I'm incredibly excited about what we're doing. And uh, I went home after our first meeting and, and talked to my wife about it. And it was, she just kind of saw how excited I was. And she's like, well, I can't wait to use it. I'm like, well, I can't, can't wait to take the kids down there uh play in the playground and go on the amphitheater and, and and it's just as as everyone knows it is it makes me excited just seeing this and it re-energizes me about Brentwood bound every day great thanks sir yeah jeff and then i'll get you steve yeah, uh, you you brought up a, a question a question or comment that helped me remind me of a, a question that i had which one works better for being able to rent parts of the space out simultaneously um you know because there might be a case where you might you know have one section of the the building and then the inside rented at the same time um it seems like uh the the, the gateway concept allowed that more but curious on on your your thoughts on that i would agree i think the the gateway probably does lend itself to uh the the rental aspect a little bit easier because this it does have that open feel to it a little bit more. Uh, again, I think uh, not that the quarry concept couldn't be rentable. Don't get me wrong. I just think uh, when you're looking at different things we could do for renting corporate uh, rentals, uh, family rentals, I think uh, you might just get a better response from the gateway concept. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, I would just want to also tag along with the concept of that openness of the gateway with those with the glass and everything. It kind of then opens up where other people using other amenities in the park are a part of all the people that are in that building. So you're seeing a lot more going on than people in the building being hidden by walls. And it just it looks like it's all part of the whole entire global park complex uh, experience that I, I think we're trying to shoot for there. So my vote, you know, with a little bit of those tweaks would be that uh, the, the gateway facility. Thanks. Yeah, Craig. So I do this a lot with a lot of various groups of people and uh, the outcome of this is the best that can happen because the experience that Bola, Eric and I with Kristner had is the exact same experience that you all had. Where like Eric said, we, we generally liked concept one, but we wanted to pick a few things from concept two. And that's what all of you just did. You said, hey, we like concept one, but we want it pushed north. We want the bathrooms on the north. 
So that those are two things you pull from concept two to ultimately put into concept one. So uh, it's just great to see a general consensus like this where uh, it's not like two people want concept two and two people want concept one. We all like concept one. We just want to make a few tweaks. And um, so this is like the best outcome we could have. Obviously, you know, there's a whole de design effort in front of us that Chris and will take these concepts and uh, come up with some new ideas based on what, it, what everyone's saying. But I just want to say this is this is incredible. This is uh, rarely happens on things like this that are subjective. So um, yeah, this is just really cool. So I just wanted to just point that out for you all. I'm happy to hear how you all have reacted to it. And I think everything that you all have said are things that we said when we met. However, the things that you said that I didn't say, or I don't think any of us said, I, I think um, the Krishner team really need to take that into consideration. Um, a line of sight for the bathroom. Um, um, all other things that you, wayfinding signs, really important too. And uh, making sure that the visual to the playground is not blocked for the parents. So those are, and obviously the maintenance, that's big. But one thing Brandon said was, and, and I, I thought about it when we met and I, don't, I forgot to mention it, is what about, um, damage you know to the glass it, it is real and it could be an ongoing expense for the city so uh, you know going forward i'd like to hear what Krishner would propose or graffiti on the rock you know those are things that can happen so how do we deal with that because i know that when we initially started all this um um project it came up a lot about along the trail what do we do to make sure that we can clean out graffiti? And for the glass, it is real. What, what if someone breaks it? What do we do then? Um, I got a couple, couple quick comments on those. So on the glass, even though it is more expensive, we could uh, look at what the upcharge might be for laminated glass versus tempered glass um, and uh, see what that upcharge is and, and if the budget or the project can afford it. And then on the stone, um, I haven't looked into it recently, but years ago, uh, I thought there was there might be some products out there that you could seal, you know, masonry uh, buildings with that might uh, help cut down uh, or make it easier to clean the graffiti uh, once it's applied. And and I we just need to do some digging into that. I don't have any recent experience with that, but I thought that it's something I had done some research on years ago. So I just wanted to share those items real quick. And Michael, I don't know if you got any other comments. Well, yeah, I, a couple of things. Um, it came to mind. So that Sachs project that we looked at had a honed stone, or a smooth finish on it. And, you know, that it would it just make, if you seal that stone, as David suggested, I mean, that'll make it easier to clean off any paint that gets sprayed onto it compared to, um, you know, like a split face or a rough stone. Um, so that might be something we would want to consider um, the window system that we would use would be something that, um, you know, it would work with like a standard insulated glass unit um, so that you could replace windows easily. I mean, that's something that we would think about in our detail is just how to make sure that those windows are easy to, to replace if, you know, hope, hopefully you don't have problems, but in the event you do need to uh, and then we can also think about maybe there are some ways to, to limit the glass in a way that makes sense uh, to cut back on that. Um, of course, that's an expense, right? I mean, the glass wall is probably going to be one of the more expensive parts of the design. So there might even be some cost savings. It's a prudent thing to do anyway, um, but something that we would want to be thinking as we move forward. Yeah, Steve. Eric, do we have any of the facilities? Are they cameraed or? Um... Yeah, and, and that's just what I was about to say is that currently we're in the process of getting most of our park systems uh, working through our IT department to get them uh, Wi-Fi connected and getting cameras on most of our facilities. Uh, Memorial Park is right now. Uh, they're working on Brentwood Park and uh, in Oak Tree as well. Uh, our biggest issue, to be honest, is Oak Tree Park because obviously that is down in a little bit of a gully and it is very secluded. So most of any of our uh, sort of uh, graffiti issues or vandalism issues have been either in Oak Tree Park 
or it used to be behind the handball court in, in uh, Hanley Park because it was a nice place where you could tag the back of the handball court. Obviously, that's not much of an issue anymore. Um, but I think, you know, usually, uh, knock on wood, most of our other parks have been pretty good uh, beyond uh, occasional times at Oak Tree Park. Uh, we did put up a dummy camera at Oak Tree Park after a few instances and the dummy camera seemed to temper uh, the, the issues for a while. Uh, now that we have a, a real camera down there again, we haven't had many issues. So again, that's something that we'd be working on is getting uh, Wi-Fi down there as well and, and a camera system as well. Okay, thanks. Sure. Jeff, did you have a comment? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, you, you guys have mentioned it a couple times. Uh, cost budget um, which one of these or what are the what do you think the construction cost implications are for or is it just too early to uh, to determine for either either concept um, I would have said that maybe the first one um, is more potentially more cost effective but you brought up the fact that all that glass probably is costly so it is curious. I can take that it is um it is too early to tell. Uh, concept of one is definitely cheaper, um, but we didn't want to spend a lot of time pricing options because you guys could have shot them both down. You know, so um, hearing that you would like concept of one, uh, we'll Kristen will go back, come up with some updates based on all the comments you've said, and then I can do a quick pricing exercise to see where we are with budget in relation to that new design with those comments. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy. Um, so I have a question about the, um, in both designs, it was sort of flat on one side and there were stairs on the, so I'll go with the gateway. They seemed flat on the south side. And then as you went north, there were a couple stairs, which really make it look interesting. And um, it's a pretty cool design. But in other parks where you've done this, are there issues with like, ADA or somebody like just stepping to the edge and tripping because it's flat on one side and there's a step on the other. Is that, um, I mean, I, I like the look of it better, but I'm just curious if there are issues another place. Um, yeah, I can speak, speak to that a little bit. So um, our site is actually pretty flat um, and that those stairs that were illustrated are something that we would, would create actually and um, having the pavilion lifted up, you know, uh, eight inches, 12 inches is kind of a good thing to do to get water to drain away from the building. Um, so I think that was kind of, you know, just the starting point is that we're going to want to raise the building up a little bit. So we might have 12 inches, say, to play with and just how we regrade around it. Um, and so we would have the ability to perhaps reveal some steps on the side if we wanted. Um, and you know that can be just kind of a, a nice way to transition to the event lawn. I mean, that said, we, we do need to make it fully accessible. So all of the spaces need to be wheelchair accessible. Um, and you know, we would be cognizant of that. For safety, uh, kind of one good rule of thumb is to always have at least two steps, two risers. Um, when there's only one riser, that can be harder for people to detect. And then there are issues for, you know, people that are visually impaired um, and things that we can be thinking about, you know, how the edge is treated, you know, texture, or, you know, even just kind of ways to, to be able to detect that edge. Um, you know, how you set it up, you know, maybe there's planters or things. I don't know. I mean, there, there are different things we can think about, but it's a good comment to, to be mindful of ADA or universal design, we call that sometimes. So, Thank you. And obviously, we, anytime we go through design, we have our occlusion coordinator look at design and make sure that we follow all of our ADA, follow all ADA. So she'll, she'll be involved in this process as well. Yes, Steve. Hey, Craig, you know, we, you, you mentioned you don't have the cost. Do you have a feel for, you know, there's a base cost no matter what we put there. You got utilities, you got to get to the site. And it, there's going to be some costs that are common no matter what we would build there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any feel for that? Um, it was, 
it was a couple hundred thousand to get, uh, we have to get power to the site regardless. And the event lawn comfort station building was always going to be the hub, right? Because you need to run power to the rest of the site from somewhere. And we only have one electrical room on the whole park. So uh, getting Ameren to get power there to center park was uh, costly. And then there are utilities for water, storm, sewer, um, along with all the uh, MSD requirements as well. So I don't have those numbers off the top of my head, but okay. I can tell you it was a couple hundred thousand. The biggest cost was the Ameren cost, um, just getting power over there. And remember, it's more than just the power of the building. We have to bring power for the park to that electrical room. And then from there, it'll branch off and provide power to the soccer field as necessary. If there's any sort of water feature at the playground, if you guys decide to fund it, everything will come from that hub to the rest of the park. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, Craig, so, just give, sorry, go ahead. Craig, you know, just to give Craig that utilities is gonna be 300,000. There you go. Utilities to any building in that area. So, so will this design, um, does this meet all the requirements for the grant uh, that we're going after? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're still in the conceptual part. I mean, all we're, I mean, we're really just looking at pictures right now, but as it currently looks, as I, it, it sure looks like it does. We'll have to get into further design before I can say with 100% accuracy that it will. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously David and Michael know uh, what we need for the grant. So um, I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to get there based on what that first concept, that, that gateway concept looks like. and and their understanding of what we need for the grant. Okay, and then is there an opportunity to do some sustainability here? I mean, especially with it being the power hub of the entire park, is this, is this an opportunity to at least provision maybe for solar panels on, or, or do it right from the get-go since we're building it or for other ideas like that uh, from a sustainability? I mean, this is a brand design. Yeah, we did actually in our, one of our programming meetings talk about sustainability, things we could do. Uh, I think we'd be talking about that moving forward once we got to whichever concept we move forward with. So there'd be definitely some things we can talk about as far as sustainability. Okay. And then will this uh, presentation be made available to us? I mean, it, I feel like it would be good to socialize with the rest of the board since they're ultimately going to have the say on this, uh, just so they can kind of see the process as it's going through. Uh, certainly, yeah. And Eric, I can send what we're looking at right now. I can send that to you. Um, is that a good way to distribute? If um, Michael can send that to Kelly and Kelly can upload it into this, um, into board docs and also share it with the alderman at the same time. Yeah, okay. I, if, if you That's upload board docs, I'm, I'm happy to send it out to the rest of the board too. Okay. Great, thanks. Any other questions or comments from the board? Good stuff, good stuff. All right. Okay, uh, moving on then to uh, department reports. Uh, so Public Works is up first. And, and I, I apologize if there's no more questions, I think we're gonna go ahead and jump off or I'm gonna go ahead and jump off. Yeah, I think we're good with that. Thanks, Thanks again, everybody. Good. Have a great evening. So, thank, thank you. Thanks all. Good night. See you later. Yep. They don't want to hear about trash cans, I guess. <laughs> I know. What's Bummer. up with that? Yeah, there's not a whole lot to report on trash. It seems like uh, Brentwood Forest has gotten with the program. There's very few that don't use receptacles, and we just leave it. And then their building maintenance picks it up. So... I haven't heard anything from the county. I assume that Brentwood Forest notified them that they've been doing this. I might just check. You know, it's really between them and the county, but just curious, you know, it's something that they were enforcing and it's been followed. So that's an improvement over what used to happen. Um, nothing really to report on an MSD project. Some of the other things that I thought about afterwards, uh, Woods Basement, I'm sure you're aware they're out doing sidewalk leveling. They're actually over on White, like east of uh, the Starbucks, that section of White, east of Brentwood Boulevard. I believe that they've completed that. They're roughly halfway done with the list of streets that we gave them that they priced up. Um, other sidewalk work we've been doing, I think
think everyone's aware, we purchased a sidewalk planer. So we're able to grind down imperfections, say like an inch or so, maybe inch and a half. We can grind that down flush with the uh, panel next to it, so long as both panels aren't cracked and in good shape. And then that saves us from having to tear it out and redo it. And then uh, we're doing crack sealing all over on different streets. I know they did Melvin and Lewis and several other streets. So if you get any calls, you know, that's what they're doing. You know, some people thought that that was graffiti on the pavement last year. You know, we do it every year. Um, so we try to preserve anywhere we see cracking or where utilities have done pavement cuts. And then we have to basically where that seam is, you know, seal that area. Um, good news is I know that the uh, water company finally finished all those streets back there in Hanley Industrial, those concrete slabs are put back. So like by Hoffman Brothers, uh, Brentwood School District, running all the way up to Classic Car Studios, Metro Lighting, you know, it looks a lot better, you know, for, I know this time last year it was leaking water, you know, pretty much all winter and then they started fixing it. I can't remember exactly when, but, you know, it also makes less work for us when we do our repairs next year back there, we'll recalibrate what slabs need to be done. And, you know, they've replaced a lot of those from center line over to the uh, rolled edge. So I don't know if you had any other questions specific for public works. Hey Dan, on the, on that ceiling, when it's a concrete street, will the, will the black tar, will that kind of get worn away? So it's just down in the crack uh, over time or is it? Eventually it does. It? Yeah. Yeah, because I know some people have complained, they're like, well, why'd you do that to concrete? It's like, well, it's, it's, you know, professionally you can do that, or we've got like these little black pellets that we can fill in the cracks and then melt them. It's a what self do you call it? leveling. Yeah, because if you look at uh, Eulalie, there's a lot of areas that have that self leveling crack stuff. Eventually, I know parts of Eulalie, we've replaced a lot up by the fire department, and as they continue to wear and degrade, we'll replace other slabs. It's a lot of labor, but it, it'll eventually get done where it'll all be new. Yeah, you did, you did our street and all my neighbors say the uh, cul-de-sac looks like the Death Star now because it's got all these black lines on it. <laughs> yeah, there's like black tattooing. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I think you had a question? Yeah, a qu question about uh, the Brentwood Forest stuff. So that was, that's, that's just information of what has been communicated to date or do they still have a problem um, with complaints to the county. I, I, as I was reading it, I, I couldn't tell if this was a historical or, or recent. This isn't the most recent. I'll have to do some research because I know, um, you know, even though they said October 1, it was probably in November when they really started getting with the program. Some of the residents, you know, just flat out refused, uh, but that's changed quite a bit. I'd say on a given day, their trash is picked up on Mondays and Thursdays. There might be two or three bags now out of the over 1,400 units. It's not a bad number now. Okay. Yeah, Steve? Yeah, they, they've pretty much sent out letters to everybody that they have to have their own cans. Mm -hmm. um, I think Kathy O'Neill was trying to get some unified looking trash can that everybody would use, but I think that didn't go anywhere. And they are real active on sending out letters. They go through the trash, plastic bags out there, they go through it and find out who unit it belongs to and they send a letter. So I think they're on top of it on their own. Yeah, Nancy? I, uh, an anecdotal note, I walk the dogs over there a lot of mornings and I was through there this morning and they were all different looking cans, but it appeared that everything was in a can in the stretch of mm -hmm. the area that I walked through. Good. Good. All right, any other questions or comments for Dan? All right, we'll move on to public work, or I'm sorry, parks and recreation. This is all public works. So Eric, you're up. Yeah, what I had must have been uh, carried over from a different meeting because I didn't have anything besides the presentation. So. Um, I do know we talked about having a presentation on playgrounds to bring to you guys. Uh, we wanted to not do that the same month as uh, the pavilion, so we'll do that next month. Um, and so just uh, as a preview, I think the idea is to do something that would be 
uh, as a, would, would complement the pavilion and the park as well. So, I mean, that's what we're kind of looking at is something for a playground. So, uh, but that's just kind of a preview for next month. And Eric, were you going to give an update on the Bridgeport, the White Avenue that was in the board docs, or is that coming in a future meeting? Yeah, we're, we're you know, we're just working on that right now. Um, I think uh, Dan, you know, Dan Staff is looking at the slope. Uh, we are slowly removing the, um, the asphalt around the tree to see how much of the uh, tree root is near the pathways. Uh, and then at that point, we'll have to decide, determine if we actually have that three foot width around the tree. Or we're going to have to talk to one or both of the homeowners to see if we need to get their fence line uh, away from uh, the right of way. So that's where we're at right now. And then we're, we're the, the goal is to basically at that point, figure out, come back to the public works at that point to see, to let you guys know what we find once we get the, the asphalt away from the tree. That's, that's the biggest issue to, to begin with is... Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not we're going to have to talk to one or both of those homeowners about uh, their tree or not the trees, the fence line. Okay. Any questions for Eric? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Eric, you, you, you uh, read my mind as far as the playground goes. I think, um, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of the trends that I'm seeing uh, now is, is kind of the natural playgrounds um, and trying to get it into into the setting uh, you, you look at what they're going to be building and opening up in forest park and mm -hmm. you know some of the some of the, the clever use of the topography and, and and actual you know elements that are there i think is what um, i'm excited to see just so it fits and flows right in um, yeah that that's exactly uh, not not to give you the, the complete rundown, but that that'll be something. Uh, the the two things that to kind of talk about is uh, a naturescape playground is what they're talking about. Yep. Uh, you know, the, there's the traditional playground, a lot of plastic, a lot of things. And you look at Oak Tree Park, uh, a, a fully uh, inclusive playground, and there's tons of those in, inclusive playgrounds. Um, you know, the the naturescape playgrounds and what I like to call kind of a hybrid, which is kind of a a, a little bit of version that does use the topography of a, a, a playground. Uh, O'Day Park in O'Fallon is what I think a great example of a kind of what I call a hybrid. It does have a little bit of some play features, a lot of the naturescape stuff. And so I'll give you kind of those different examples and kind of we'll, we'll talk from there. So uh, yeah, my, that's great. My, my daughter couldn't stop talking about going to Queenie Park, which is a that's been around for a long time with all the yeah. tunnels and stuff, but yeah. they were way ahead of way ahead of things, I guess, when they built the all that. But uh, yeah, Queenie's kind of like that first sort of hybrid sort of model, exactly. Exactly. Great. Yeah, Nancy. Since it's on this agenda that you weren't really going to talk about, can you give an update on the surveying services? Yeah, it, they actually, they finished up all the, the groundwork, they're putting all the data together and they should be setting up a meeting with Dan, myself and Lisa before the end of the year. So we should have that data, uh, hopefully before the end of the year. And, and my hope is to have a report for you guys by the, what is this, uh, the January meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Any other questions for Eric? Okay, move on to uh, planning and development. Lisa's not here. No report. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we'll move on to item eight, the uh, consent agenda. We just have two, uh, two meeting minutes to get approved there. Um, so can I get a motion from somebody to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. second. All right, we got a Jeff primary and I think Nancy was yep. the second. Close. Uh, roll call on that, or since it's just meeting minutes, doesn't matter. Okay, can we get a roll call, Kelly, please? Okay. Uh, let's. You don't need a roll call. Acclamation. Okay. Acclamation. Uh, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed. Great. That passes. So we have one item under old business called old business. <laughs> No old okay. business. And about new business called new business? <laughs> no, no new business. Okay. Uh, any citizens stick around? No, nope. no comments. No hands raised. Okay. Let's uh, adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? 
Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Great. Have a great Christmas. We don't see everybody. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Good night, all. Thanks.